got my poor heart all aflutter And I feel like I'm walking on air I can't say a word lest I stutter You've got me sitting on the edge of my chair There isn't a rhyme or a reason For the way that you act, I declare So why don't you stop all this teasing You've got me sitting on the edge of my chair I find I've been wrapped round your finger I'm dancing to music you play, baby, play I feel like I've been through a ringer From day to day I'm wasting away You don't seem to see why I grumble And you don't understand it's unfair Oh, why don't you give me a tumble You got me sitting on the edge You got me sitting on the edge of my chair Oh, boy. Can you tell me the road to New York? This road. But which way do I turn? Either way, it's all the same road. Yes, I know, but which is the shorter? I don't know. I ain't never been there. Why don't you ask Speck Higgins who lives down the road a ways? He ought to know. He wears shoes and just goes everywhere. He does? Well, can you tell me how I get there? Well, you go down this road here until you come to the fork, and just before you get to the fork, why, you see a haystack up on the hill, and just before you get to that, why, you go down through a holler, and then you come to some willers, and and you go down and go through a draw, well, and it's just about a spitting a jump from there up to Speck Higgins' house. Thank you very much. Are you Speck Higgins? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like a little information. The fellow putting arrows on the detour sign said you wore shoes and just went everywhere. Oh, I know who you mean, but he ain't always right. I've been to nearly every town in the county, though. What do you want to know? Well, how do I get on the main highway? Right on down this way, miss. Fine. Say, where are you going? New York. New York? Gosh, I've been dying to go to New York for a long time. Did you ever see any big broadcasting stations? Why, of course. New York's full of them. Home <laughs> Coming, Mama. Thought your name was Speck. Oh, Mama calls me Homer, but nearly everybody else around here calls me Speck. Well, thanks for the information. Don't mention it. So long. Bye. You see her, Minnie? Pretty, ain't she? Homer! I'll be back after supper, Minnie. I got an idea I want to talk to you about. Pretty good, one, too. Maybe we can make up a song about it. It's almost time for the Red Star Cheese program, Homer. Say, that's right. Thanks, Mom. How do you feel tonight, Grandma? Only the Boy, I sure hope Don Gray sings my song tonight. It's nigh on to two months since Homer sent that song to Mr. Gray. Two months in very long, Martha. Don't forget, you had to go all the way to New York. Shh. I got it. You don't seem to see why I grumble. And you don't understand it's unfair. Oh, why don't you give me a tumble? You got me sitting on the edge of my chair. That was Don Gray, singing his own composition, sitting on the edge of my chair. Did you hear that? He said it was his own composition. Oh, Homer, isn't that nice? Him singing the first song you sent him. Well, he could have said I wrote it anyhow. Oh, Homer, maybe he just forgot. Forgot nothing. Well, Mom, you couldn't forget if somebody sent you a song and you used it and said you wrote it when you never. 
I always said you never can trust one of them crooners. I'll say you can. I've got a good mind to go to New York and beat the stuffing out of that Don Gray. Oh, now, Homer. It, it, it costs a lot to travel. Take at least $50 to go to New York and back. Mama, pack my things. What are you going to do? I've got an idea. Oh, for land's sakes. <laughs> Looks like Spec Higgins is bringing his cow in here. What? Here, in here. Sure. I could use a glass of beer. Have you got any? No. Then why'd you ask me first? Hmm. Howdy, Spec. Spec Higgins is here. That's what I just got through telling you. What? Oh, apple sass. Hello, Sheriff. Howdy, Mayor. How are you? What can I do for you? What are you sore about, Sheriff? Oh, <laughs> I ain't sore. That old limb crack. Hands like that all the time. You can't hear a thing. What's on your mind, Speck? Well, look, Sheriff, I want to see you a minute. Can't hear what you said. He said he wanted to see me. Well, he's looking right at you, ain't he? You see, Sheriff, it's like this. I, I want to go to New York at once, and, and I need $50. You ain't going to get married, are you, Speck? No. No, it's more important than that. You see, it's about a song I wrote. I figured that, well, you could let me have $50, and, and I could leave many here until I could pay you back. Why? That cow ain't hardly worth no $50. Yes, she is. What did you know head up about, Spade? Well, you heard what he said. He said many wasn't worth $50. Well, why don't you sell her? I don't want to sell her. I just want to borrow money. He wants to borrow on her. How much? $50. Why don't you let him have it? Well, Speck, I'll let you have the 50 Say, that's swell. But you'll have to pay for the fee. Ain't you gonna let him have it? If he pays for the fee, as mayor of Huckabee, it's my duty to help you out, Spig. You bring Minnie over to my house. I'll let you have the money, and you won't have to pay for the fee, another. Say, that's swell, Mayor. Say, do you want me to leave the halter with you? Like that? Oh, I just said thanks. Uh, what did he say? He said he wanted to leave the halter with you. No, I don't want any water. I want beer. Are you going to start that over again? Huh? Oh! All right, Mary. Yes, I'll tell her to wait. Just a moment. Won't you have a seat, please? Oh! You've got the whole floor. You don't have to put your foot right onto me, do you? Excuse me. You play the guitar? Huh? Oh, yes, I'm the guitar. Well, I'm sorry. There are 321 hillbilly auditions ahead of you. I ain't, a, I ain't a hillbilly and I don't want an audition. I want to see Don Gray. But that's quite impossible. Why? The Red Star Cheese program is on the air right now. Oh. Okay, thanks. What's delaying Don Gray? Well, I'm sure I don't know. He's already ten minutes late. Run in the next act. I'll check up on him. Okay.
That was the Red Star Cheese Sisters. Those little ladies turned out to be more than you expected. And that's what you get every time you buy a package of Red Star Cheese. The cheese with a personality. Has Don Gray come in yet? No, Mr. Mulvaney, he hasn't come in yet. Yes, I will. Now, looky here, miss. I come all the way from Huckabee, Arkansas, 1,212 miles, and I'll tell you I got this scene. Very well, then. Have a chair, and I'll call you when he comes in. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And now, I'm going to turn the microphone over to our sports commentator, Billy Green. All right. It's all yours. Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Your favorite news commentator is very, very happy to be up here as guest of the Star Cheese program. And I have brought you a great surprise indeed. No doubt you all remember that great All-American fullback, State 1928-31, and today hailed as America's All-America coach. I'd like to have you meet him as your guest this evening, and my guest, Big Slip Manahan. Well, how are you, coach? It's a pleasure to see you. I know that you look a little tired this evening. No, 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 no not tired, not tired. Ah, the old inexhaustible coach. <laughs> ah, yes, sir. Oh, I'm very sorry, coach. You know, coach, you don't mind a little interview over the air tonight? I'm sure that the public would like to know this new game that you're sort of instituting for the next year. They'd uh, like to have you tell them a little something about the plays that you're going to use at the bowl when you play for the championship. Don't sleep while I'm talking, coach. Please and I'm, uh, I'm still talking. Uh, coach, you just... Uh, you just stepped out of the stadium. I want you to tell these ladies and gentlemen just what systems you use. The different teams that you play, I'm sure that they'd be interested. After all, you know that football is sort of a national institution, coach. <laughs> and, uh, yes, it is. And you could tell them a little something about the intricacies of football. <laughs> coach, do you mind uh, if I ask you a little question? You no doubt remember the time I failed to make a touchdown for you back in 1928 as your star quarterback? Back there with the Fulton University of Illinois. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Coach, tell them a little something about that game. Sort of make me reminisce. Do you know, Coach, I don't... Oh, are you a little tired? Well, you go right ahead. But this time, this studio audience and everybody listening in on the air would like to hear a few words. You go right ahead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yes. it is a pleasure. Football today means more to the public than anything to the people who are certified. You can all see it. You can go down to the football team. But the one thing, one thing must know, that any man, woman, or child would know that football thing. A boy, what does he want to football? And he can't start a football game unless you have a football. But, oh. There you are, coach. Oh. Just what you live for. The old pigs. <coughs> oh, Why? What are these going to You get them. You get the football team. The two teams get on the field. And it was the ball. That's the and they get caught. They kick off like that. They kick off. What are they? Then you get into a... And the boys get in it. And then another lesson is the second group. Oh, and they get shot again. And the two teams are good. And they get. And that's not enough. Then the team gets in it. And they get behind it. And that's not enough. 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 And that's not en
I remember you now. You're the boy that tried to murder me. Uh, a man I never saw you before in my life. What are you talking about? Don't try to deny it. You're wearing horn rim glasses, huh? You're the guy. Well, now I'm the guy. Oh, you want to fight, huh? I, I, I had a fight. That's why I'm here. Here, I'll give you a hand. Here you go. Thanks. Well, let that be a lesson to you. Boy, you're knocking him for a loop. Thanks. You know, that song is going to make a fortune for you. Oh, incidentally, this week's report shows that you're second in nationwide popularity. Only second? Well, I've done everything but put a copy of that song in every home in America. After the publicity campaign I put on for you, as a matter of fact, I just about saved your life a few minutes ago. Some uh, jealous radio husband? No, well, I didn't ask him if he was married, but he claims you stole his song. Why should I steal one when I can write a song like that last number? <laughs> that's what I thought, but the uh, country yap claimed that's the number you stole. And he wanted to beat the daylights out of you. <laughs> uh, where is he now? In jail. I called the cops. Nice work, Flash. Uh, answer this mail, will you? And uh, this last one. Tell her no. Definitely no. Huh? Uh. I know you. No, you don't. Well, then why are you wearing glasses like that? I can just naturally see better with them. See who? Say, did you steal my coat? Steal your coat, what are you talking Say, it's about time you let me out of here. Quiet down. Yes, sir. It's this guy I'm taking out. Who, me? Yes, you. Come on. Say, listen here. As his personal lawyer, I demanded that he have a fair and impartial trial. You can't convict a condemned man, and I'm just the guy that can do it. Come back here. Are you Spike Higgins? Yeah, why? What do you want? This is the man that paid your bail. You can go. Is this your hat? Yeah, thanks. Much obliged to you. Forget it. I'm sorry about you being thrown in jail. Yeah, can you imagine that? But if I ever lay hands on that guy at the broadcasting station... <laughs> I don't blame you for being angry about that. Suppose we have dinner together. I've got a little business I want to talk over with you. Boy, I could go for some eats. What kind of business? Uh, it concerns a song you sent me. Say, you're not Don Gray. Yes. Why, you don't look like the kind of a man that'd steal my song. I didn't steal your song. You see, I mislaid your address and I'm waiting for you to get in touch with me. Let's go. We'll straighten everything out while we're dining. That suits me. Okay, we'll go to the Club Marigold. And that lady back there knows her address is slid up the side. I reckon she does. In a demitas. Mm -hmm. Bring me that. 
Oh, but surely Monsieur wishes more than an order of radishes. Sure I do. But that's what you ordered, Monsieur. Just bring me the same as he took. Oh, Monsieur. And Higgins, uh, what do you think you ought to get for that song? Well, I'll have to figure her up here now. Let me see. Fifty dollars that I borrowed from Sheriff Wade. But I spent that fifty. That makes still another fifty. And I have to pay that back, Mr. Gray. That's another fifty. And $42.90, that's railroad fare from Huckabee out here. Yes. And a dollar and 20 cents for my eats. Now, let's see, that's uh, $194.10 all told. $194.10? Yes, sir, and I ain't gonna take a cent less. Suppose I make it an even $200. Oh, that'd be right big of you, Mr. Gray. And then I could take some pretties home to Mom and Grandma. Fine. Then we'll draw up a contract covering everything. And I'll give you my check. Uh, a waiter. Yes, sir. Uh, bring me a sheet of writing paper and a pen, please. Very good. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I present that charming little lady, Miss Barbara Holbrook. Miss Holbrook. Think of that. You came to me on wings. What did he say her name was? Her name is Barbara Holbrook. Barbara Holbrook. Say that's a pretty name, ain't it? Mm -hmm. You have come my way. And with gratitude I face the day. Thankful that at last the love has come to stay. Come whatever may owe. What else could anyone desire? My heart's a fire. You're the one that's sweet. Everybody knows you're sweet. Hello, Mr. Draper. Oh, Barbara. Here's a message from your brother. The phone call came to my office while you were singing. Is he, uh, in again? I'm afraid you've guessed it. All right. I'll go down and bail him out after the last show. Thanks. <laughs> This contract merely states that for the sum of $200, you give me the rights and the title to the song sitting on the edge of my chair. Sign right there. Well, if you say it's all right, I guess it is. Why, there isn't the slightest doubt about it, Higgins. Sign on this line and I'll give you my check. Well, here goes. The song really isn't worth $200, but I'll take that chance. And remember, Higgins, from now on, I wrote that song. Oh, sure, Mr. Gray, whatever you say. <sighs> you know, Grandma used to have them wheezing spells like that. Huh? Fellas, we've got a new racket. What? Great. Let's have it. We're going to publish music. Is it uh, legitimate? Well, yes and no. Well, which is it mostly, yes or, or no? 
Jack, Don Gray is sitting outside at the table. Bring him in here, will you? Okay, boss. Well, what's he got to do with it? Just stick around. You'll find out. Gray, I'm starting a music publishing company. I've decided to take you in, let you sing your songs, and cut you in for 20% of the tape. Well, that's very nice of you. But this isn't Christmas. No, I'm not giving presents. I'm taking them. So I'll thank you for the contract that Hayseed out there signed over to you. I get it. That's fine. Because two very unpleasant things might happen to a young man in your position, if you were dumb. Namely? Well, first, the great American radio audience might be shocked to find that one of its favorite crooners was a thief. And second, countless feminine romantic admirers might be discouraged if his nose were moved over a couple of inches. Do I make myself clear? Very. That's splendid. Sit down and we'll talk it over. Your friend won't miss you for a minute. He'll be enjoying the entertainment. Good evening, Mr. Henderson. Hello, Philip. I presume you want to join Mr. Gray. Oh, I didn't know he was here. Yes, I'd like to. This way, please. Oh, thanks. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Gray was here a moment ago. I'll see if I can find him. All right, thanks. Hey, how did you get out? So, you were just stalling me, huh? Don't fight here. Fight. Get oh, yeah. here. Get here. Now I find... I'm right back where I started. I met you, gave you my heart, never knew we'd drift apart, but I find I'm right back where I started. Life was a song, suddenly, everything's wrong, and I find that I'm right back where I started. I thought your love for me was so sincere, something sent from up above. But you were fooling from the start, I fear. Were you just in love with love? Somebody new might come my way, but just like you, she'll go away, and I'll find that I'm right back quick. That's not the way it goes. Play it again, and I'll show you. Go ahead. You love me, that makes it wrong. I don't love you, and now it's a song. And I, I'm away back where I started from. You guys pipe down, and how do you expect my old man to sleep? Rumpy doopy boopy boopy doo. You love me, and now it's all right. That even hurts my eardrums. Throw that guy that's singing in the shower. Uh, It'll be a pleasure. Uh, say, how does it go from there? Will you show me? I'd be glad to. I thought your love for me was so sincere. Something sent... Come on, you. What's wrong now? What do you think this is, an opera house? Well, where are we going? You'll find out. Hey, the law provides that two witnesses must be present to attend the test of the condemned, huh? Hey, what are you doing? We're going to cool off those hot pipes of yours. Come on. In the common laws of the state of New York, Ordinance 342A, People versus Gallagher. Yeah. What are you doing here? Shh. Hey, I'm in jail. Hey, you got the wrong guy. What's on you? What's that? You got the wrong guy in the shower. You got the wrong guy under the shower. Hey, let me, let me hey I'll handle this. Hey, well, I was only helping you out. Say, why do you hear me? Let me out of here, will you? Hey, let me out of here. Hey, look at the... Let me out of here, will you? I'm sorry. Hey, let me out of here. Woo-hoo! Hey, what goes on you? Who? 
So this is the setup. I take over the contract, cut you in on that or any other songs we get from Higgins, which saves us a lot of unnecessary trouble and you a, a great deal of embarrassment. You aren't giving me much choice, are you, Draper? I'm not giving you any. This is my racket. Do you understand what I mean? Only too clearly. Thanks. Now we'll go and tell Higgins that I'm taking over the contract. Hello, Don. Hi, uh, Draper. Where's Higgins? Higgins? Oh, that's the guy that was going to beat you up. Come on, where is he? Yeah, it's lucky for you that I saw him first. I had him thrown in jail again. I wish you'd keep your nose out of my affairs. Jack. Go down and get him out of jail. Okay, boss. And in the meantime, we'll just stick together. If this is a double cross... Good evening, Sergeant. Good evening, Miss Holbrook. How much is it this time? Our price has never changed. It's the same as it was the last time. Very well. Hello. Bring out Holbrook. Holbrook? Right. That was great of you to do that for me, old pal. Come on, Holbrook. You're out. Wait, wait, wait. I refuse to desert my friend. I won't leave here without Spot. No, sir. Not Gilbert Holbrook. Look, you better clear out while you got a chance. I'll see you when you come back. No, sir. Anyone who'll take a shower from me is my pal, and I refuse to abandon him. Let's give him the high sign of the exalted order. Are you coming out or not? No, both or none. All right, have it your own way. Now, you see, he's changed his mind. Oh, that's all right. He left the door open long enough for us to get a little fresh air, didn't he? Hello? Just a minute. Your brother's got a friend in there, and he won't leave without him. It's a wonder he didn't bring along the Rotary and the Elks. He belongs to both of them. Is that so? You know, I'm an eagle. How exciting. Well, what's the friend in for, and how much is it? Disturbing the peace, and it's $20. All right. Okay, bring them both out. Right. Jailbreak. Reckon it's all right? Gilbert. Hello, Barbara. Well? Well, it's just like it was before. You had a big case. You couldn't think of anything brilliant. So you thought a drink would help you. But I won. What do you think of that? Oh, I'm tired. Let's go home. Now, wait, wait, wait. Gosh, I didn't expect to see you here in jail. And I didn't expect to see you in New York. What? You two know each other? Sure, we met down on the farm. A what? Homer lives on a farm. Homer, oh, his name is Spot. It's Speck, Mr. Holbrook. Oh, I'll try and remember that, Spot. What are you doing in jail? Why, he lives here. He's been in twice already tonight. Let's go, Gilbert. Now, wait a minute. Spot's going with us.
But I can't go looking like this. Oh, don't worry about that. I have a couple of suits home I'll let you have. Please, Gilbert. Spot is going with us. All right. But let's go before we all get thrown in jail. So long, Sarge. See you later. Good evening, Sergeant. Well, what can I do for you? I want to spring up. Oh, I mean I want to bail out a fellow by the name of Speck Higgins. <laughs> You're about five minutes too late. A young lady and her brother just took him home. Well, what do you think of that? <laughs> I think he's lucky. You don't happen to know who the girl is, uh, Sarge. Mm -hmm. Her name was Barbara Holbrook. Oh, her. Well, much obliged, Sarge. Wait a minute. Are you a good friend of this Speck Higgins? Sure, he's one of the best friends I've got. Well, he left his guitar here tonight. Do you mind taking it to him? You betcha. Sign that. Sweet as perfume from a lovely flower That adds enchantment to each other Every moment sweet no. Look here, Draper. I've got a broadcast to do tonight. I've got to get some sleep. There'll be no sleep for you until Higgins is safe in my hands. If I were you, Gray, I'd uh, keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, I guess so. Thankful that at last a love has come to stay. I just thought I'd fix you some breakfast. You seem to be doing a thorough job of it. Oh, I guess the clock must have stopped. No, I reckon that's about right. Oh, I forgot. You're from the country. Yeah, I guess we do get up a little early down there. You know, the rooster crows and up we get. Mmm, smells awful good. I'll set the table. Say, that's fine. The stuff's about ready to put on anyway. Didn't I hear you singing when I came in? I guess so, but I, I didn't know you heard me or I'd have tried to do better. That's the number you sang at the Marigold last night. Yes, I know. Would you mind if, if I wrote a song about you? That is, if I could think of one? I'd be flattered. If you could think of one. I'll do my best and, and, and I bet you'd be right proud to hear it too. Oh, I'm sure I shall. Mm-hmm. What's this? Hello. Have we a new cook, my dear? You remember Mr. Higgins, Gilbert? Mr. Higgins? Remember Spot? Yes. You two were jailmates. I took a shower for you. But I'm in the habit of taking my own showers. There must be some mistake. You'll have to pardon my brother, Mr. Higgins. His memory isn't always up to par. The morning after. A little alka salsa would do you more good, Gilbert. Well, everything's ready, but I couldn't find any cream. It's right outside the door. You go and get it while we change our clothes. Right. Come along, Gilbert. Hello. 
Good morning, sir. Excuse me. Ain't you the guy what wrote that song for Don Gray? Well, yeah, but why? Well, he's waiting for you to write another one. Only better. Well, tell him I'll see him after breakfast. Hey, you heard him. You coming with us now, or do we have to carry your feet first? Well, if you put it like that, I guess I'd better go along with you. Ah, that's a good boy. All right, come on. Now, don't forget what I told you. Well, here he is, boss. And no trouble at all. Did you want to see me, Mr. Gray? Oh, yes, Speck. I want you to meet a very good friend of mine, Mr. Well, golly, do you mean to tell me you dragged me away from my breakfast just to meet a friend of yours? Well, this is very important, Speck. Speck Higgins, uh, Mr. Draper. How you do, sir? How do you do, Mr. Higgins? I have a business proposition to discuss with you. Well, if it's business, I guess it's all right, but they don't have to get so tough about it, do they? Did they get tough? Why, boys, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Well, that's just what you told us to do. Right down, Mug. I'm sorry. I told them it was urgent, but I'm afraid they were a little too impetuous. Is that what y'all call that up here in New York? Back in Huckby, we call it just plumb bodacious. <laughs> Come on, sit down. I'll tell you what I have in mind. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Can I get you anything? Cigarette? Drink? No, thanks. I don't use them. But a little something to eat wouldn't hurt nothing. Oh, of course. Dixon, uh, fix Mr. Higgins some breakfast. Yes, sir. This is Dixon. Anything you want, just ask him. Well, how do you do, sir? Uh -oh. Speck, Mr. Draper is a music publisher. He's going to take over your contract. That's right, Higgins. And I'm going to pay you $50 more than Mr. Gray gave you for that last song. Only $250? Well, I can get more than that back in Huckabee. Well, how much do you expect? Well, let's see. Uh, make her $275 and she's a deal. All right, fine. Well, I guess you don't need me any longer. If I do, I'll whistle. Make sure it's the right tune. Good luck, Speck. Sure, and thanks a lot, Mr. Gray. Are you anxious to get to work? You mean now? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Draper. I can't go to work now. Why not? Oh, I couldn't write a thing without Minnie. Minnie? Now, look here. I thought you were doing a solo. Of course, if you have a partner, I suppose we'll have to cut her in. Much as I hate mixing women into business. Where can we locate her? <laughs> well, back in Huckabee, but... But Minnie's not a woman, she's my cow. What? That guy's a phony. He never wrote no songs. Maybe we better rub him out and start all over again. Say, what is a cow? Yeah, a lot of people think it's funny, but I get my rhythm from milking. Now look here, old man. I realize that you've been under a great strain, but... But this idea of having a cow to help you write music is ridiculous. What is it, an obsession? No, sir, it's a jersey. Say, what are you trying to do, kid me? Now look, Mr. Draper, I know what I can do and what I can't. And when I say I need many to write songs, well, that's about the way it stands, I guess. If it doesn't suit you, I'd just as soon be on my way back to Arkansas right now. Oh, all right, all right. We'll wire for her. Oh, that'll be dandy. Who shall I send it to? Sheriff Wade, County Sheriff's Office, Huckabee, Arkansas. Must have Minnie in New York right away. What's that? Speck wants Minnie right away. That's what I'm asking you. What did you say? I've got to send Minnie to New York. What's the matter? They run out of milk there? Maybe they can get better prices for it. Oh. <clears throat> Telegraph money order covers your loan of $50 in freight. Huh? Prepaid, signed in. I've delivered a lot of Pekingese dogs and poison cats in my life, but you've got them all big. Oh, I see. Are you sure she brought her cub with her? Her what? Her cub. You know the thing they, um, chew with? Oh, well, you look her over carefully and you'll find that she's got everything. Oh, how thoughtful of her. Now, thank you very much. Yes, I'll do that at once. So that's a cow. Yep. I had her for seven and a half years. There's not another lock in all the Huckabee. No, I imagine not. Well, I suppose you're anxious to get to work. 
Yep, now that Manny's here, it won't take me no time to think of something. A anything you want, Mr. Speck, sir? Uh, a milking pail, Dixon. A, a, a milking pail, sir? You heard him, a milking pail. But, but we have no milking pail, sir. Well, get something. Something that will hold some milk. But very good, sir. Will you need anything else, Higgins? My guitar and some writing paper and a pencil. Boy, I sure am glad many got here, say. There you are. Yeah. Put it over there, will you, boys? You heard him. Put it over there. Uh, will this serve the purpose, sir? Certainly not, Dixon. Oh. Get something much bigger. Oh. Something that'll hold a tank full if necessary. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I'm sure sorry to put you folks to so much trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. Oh, skip it. Well, I've given you everything you asked for, Higgins, and I'm expecting great things of you. I'll do my best not to disappoint you, Mr. Draper. A big pardon, sir, but this is the only thing I could find. How about it? Well, that'll do. Put it down. Uh, uh, down? Uh, yes, sir, but, but, but where? Here, I'll take it. Oh, oh, thank you very much, sir. Well, I guess you two want to be alone now. Yeah, a few minutes with Minnie and everything will be all right. That's Mr. fine. All right, boy. Thank you, sir. If you ask me, this gag of needing a car to write a song is a lot of hooey. Yeah, and I think we're a bunch of suckers to fall for it, too. You're telling me? That guy's been here all this time, and what's he done? Well, he'll write a song now, or that cow will be looking for a new composer. <laughs> That's right, boss. But I guess we better get busy if we're going to write that song for Mr. Draper. We'll tell you all about it later, huh? The minute I saw Minnie, I knew something was going to happen. You know, Higgins, if we could come out with two or three songs like this in a row, it would be splendid. You mean you want me to write some more songs for you? If you have any more ideas. Well, I'll have to think up something. Well, I'll take this down to the publishing house and get the ball rolling. In the meantime, you make yourself right at home. Oh, Mr. Draper. Yeah? Would you cash this check that Don Gray gave me? Well, of course. Gee, 200 fish. You see, I owe somebody some money here, and I want to pay him. Well, that's perfectly all right. There you are. Two hundred even. Thank you, sir. All right, boy. Anything else you want, sir? Uh, yes, take this away, Dixon. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what do you wish me to do with it, sir? Well, I drank it. Well, what, all of it, sir? Sure. Well, I, I, I'll do my best, sir. Thank you, sir. Take a look at this, Minnie. Not bad for a boy and girl that's just come to the big town, huh? Two songs on Broadway already, and that's just a starter. Well, what do you know about that? You want to hear Miss Holbrook sing, Minnie? Just listen to this. Every moment sweet, mm -hmm, sweet, as graceful as a bird in flight. You came to me on wings of mine. Every moment sweet. Goodbye to solitude since you have come my way. And with gratitude I face the day. Thankful that at last the love has come to stay. Come whatever may, oh, sweet. You're everything that I require. What else could anyone do? 
desire, my heart's a fire. You're the one that's sweet. Everybody knows you're sweet. Is that the number you meant? Yeah, I say that sure was pretty, Miss Holbrook. Thank you. You know, I wrote Mom and Grandma about you. Is that so? Of course, they're not very high on you big city singers, but but I told them that you's a lot different. Well, maybe you should have told them that I was raised on a farm myself. Honest? Why, sure. No, you're just spoofing about that. No, really. Until the time I came to New York. Well, by George, what do you know about that? Excuse me, please. Won't you sit down? Make yourself at home. Yeah, thank you. my dear. Say, how did you know I was out there? You rang the bell. What a strange coincidence. So did I. Well, if it isn't my old pal Sp Wait, wait, wait. Gee, but it's good to see you again. Well, it's good to see you. Say Please, you. Gilbert. What is it, my dear? A little rest will do you good. Let me take you to your room. Not without my old pal, Spotty. No, you go ahead. I'll see you later, huh? Well, all right, if you say so. But don't go away. I'll be back before you know about it. Darling, and my vision is okay too Just look in my eyes And you can see that the trouble with me is you I haven't got a toothache, darling They are all as good as new There's only one thing that's wrong with me Oh, the trouble with me is you Well, it doesn't take a physician To analyze my condition no hot water bottle, no powder or pill Can ever revive me like your kisses will I haven't got a heart that's strong, dear Though it may skip a beat or two It seems out of gear, it's natural, dear Cause the trouble with me Oh, the trouble with me Hello, I was just uh, singing. Yes, I heard you. It's a grand number, Speck. I'd like to use it at the club. Do you know who wrote it? Uh-huh, I did. You? Oh, I do remember you saying something about writing a song. Yes, that's one of them. Why, it's wonderful. Why don't you try and get it published? Oh, it's going to be published all right. Well, I guess I'd better be going. You wouldn't want me hanging around oh, here. No, no, no. Stay and have some tea. And then you can tell me all about it. Sure I will. All right, it'll only take a minute. Find some cigarettes on the table. I thought you were too smart to get yourself messed up like that. I guess I was a sap. What burns me up is the way Draper's giving me the runaround. <laughs> the way he aced you out, you mean. All right, have it your way. He pulled a fast one on me in Brooklyn a couple of years ago. You know, I have an idea how we can upset Mr. Draper's little apple cart. You have? Yeah, it may be kind of tough on Higgins, but I think it'll be all right. Let's have it. Now, here's what I want you to do. Vic, there's something about you I don't think you realize. Huh? You're terribly clever. Oh. No, I'm serious. Why, you should make oodles of money on your songs. Oh, that's fixed already. Really? Do you know what Mr. Draper's paying me for that song? Two hundred and seventy-five dollars. 
$275. Sure, and, and that's $75 more than Don Gray paid me for writing sitting on the edge of my chair. Speck Higgins, do you mean to tell me you wrote that song too? Sure, yep, I mean, yes, ma'am. And you sold the two songs for $475? That's right, and, and I think that's doing all right for a fellow that's just come to town and don't know nobody or nothing. You need a guardian, country boy. Speck, do you realize that Don Gray is making thousands of dollars on that song? Sure. What? And now Draper will make even twice as much on the one he's publishing. Why, songs like that have been known to make a million dollars. A million dollars? Gosh. And I was just fixing to write another one for him. Speck Higgins, don't you dare do anything of the sort. From now on, my brother will act as your attorney. You, you mean Gilbert in there? Yes. And that's nice. Well, he'll see to it that you get the money, not Mr. Draper or Don Gray. Whew, boy. What's the matter? I was just wondering what to do about that song that I gave Draper. Don't do anything. We'll let Gilbert take care of it. Draper is no man for you to deal with. Well, why? He and his so-called friends are ex-gangsters and racketeers. They'll stop at nothing to gain their point. Why, they wouldn't think anything of murdering you or anyone near and dear to you. Say, you don't, you don't think they're doing anything to Minnie, do you? Minnie? Yeah. I brought her to New York. She's at Draper's apartment right now waiting for me. But I don't see... I gotta take her where she'll be safe. Very well. If she'd like to, she can stay here until everything's straightened out. She'd like that all right, but I wouldn't put you out like that. She'd get everything all dirty. Dirty? Yeah, she's not very tidy. At home, I always keep her in the barn. In the barn? Sure. Say, I shouldn't be wasting time like this. I gotta get a truck and go over to Draper's place and get Minnie out of danger. Wait a minute, Speck. Let me get this straight. Minnie's at Draper's apartment. She isn't very tidy, so she can't stay with me. Now you have to get a truck so you can move her. That's right. I must confess, I don't understand. She must be quite a girl. A girl? I don't see anything to laugh about. <laughs> why, why, Minnie's not a girl, that's my cow. A cow? <laughs> well, back on the farm, I used to sing all of my songs to Minnie. She was sort of my inspiration, I guess. Well, I know it sounds a little funny, but I, I got my rhythm from milking, you see? Oh, I understand now. Well, we'll take care of Minnie. I'll have a truck meet us at Draper's apartment immediately. Gee, thanks, and tell him to hurry. Now, you understand what I want, Dixon. You see that the cow is put safely away someplace, and I'll see that she's taken out of the building after dark tonight. Oh, yes, indeed, sir. I understand thoroughly, sir. And if you don't mind my saying so, sir, I shall be only too glad to see the end of her. Oh, yes, yes, of course, dear. Uh, good day, sir. Uh, don't forget, Dixon. No, sir. Now, look here, sir. You come, come dashing around like... Where is she? Where's my mini? I don't know where the filthy beast is, sir. Oh, 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 oh wait a minute, Speck. Speck. Operator, this is Speck Higgin. Never mind who I am. It's awful. It's, it's kidnapping. It's happened right here, right before my eyes. Operator, give me police, army, navy, anybody, ambulance. Send them on out of here. Doggone it. Hurry, will you? Oh, don't be foolish, Speck. And I'm not kidding, either.
Well, where is my old friend Spot? Hi, there, boy. Hello, Barbara. At a time like this, you could have stayed sober. Oh, that's all right. I had to fortify myself against the truck ride. Well, we won't need a truck now. Minnie's gone. Well, that's a relief. Hey, let's look for Minnie. Excuse me. She says, now, don't look for Minnie. Hey, Minnie, Minnie, Minnie. Hey, Minnie. Hey, Minnie. Have you a drink in the house? Uh, I'll get you one, sir. Never mind, I'll go with you. Oh, very good, sir. That's them. Did you report a fire? Yes, I did. All right, I'll find it. Well, hang on a minute, I want hey, to tell hey. you about it. Hey. You report a kidnapping? Yes, sir, I did. You see, it's like this, Sergeant. It's Can one of the... Can you give us a description? Yes, sir. She's got brown eyes and reddish hair. She's 10 years old and weighs about 850 pounds. Wait a minute. 10 years old? And weighs 850 pounds. That's what I said. What, is she a circus performer? No, she's my cow. Cow? Cow? Hey, I can't find any fire. What's the idea of turning in a false alarm? What are you doing, kidding us? We ought to run you in. Oh, you can't do that, officer. No. Oh, can't we? Hey, what's going on in here? Looks like you're all mixed up in something new, Draper. Yeah. What? What's this about a kidnapped cow? Kidnapped cow? You kidnapped Minnie. What'd you do with her? Now, what would I be doing with a cow in my apartment? The man's insane. Yeah, it looks like that way to me, too. Maybe we better take him down and book him for insanity. Just a moment, officer. Maybe I'd better explain. Now, let me see. Minnie's on the roof. Oh, you're, you're cold. I'm cold. Minnie's in the bathroom. Oh, you're, you're positively frigid. Oh, I say you want to find me. No, no, no. Oh, well, it's oh. a good thing for you. <laughs> uh, hmm. Minnie's in. Minnie's, Minnie's in the cellar. <laughs> You're getting warmer, sir. <laughs> By the furnace. Oh, you're frightfully hot, sir. <laughs> you're telling me? Yes. Sir. And I'm going to tell you something. You glaze yourself open to arrest. Arrest, sir. On two counts. And if you don't return many here within five minutes, I'm going to sit here and think up two more counts that's going to put you in jail until you have a long white beard. In that case, I'll, I'll go and fetch her at once. Put me in jail. Oh, oh, how humiliating. You won't mind that after six or eight months. When Mr. Higgins and I got here, Minnie was gone. And that's a fact. That's a lot of nonsense. It's nothing of the kind. You're disgusting, Gilbert. Everything's all right. Spot. I found Minnie. Where is she? She'll be here in a minute. Oh, boy. Mr. Draper. As Mr. Higgins' legal advisor, I wish to inform you that the contract between Mr. Higgins and Don Gray was personal, therefore not transferable to you. Say, what are you trying to do, Holbrook? Throw a scare into me? Furthermore, if you publish that song to which you hold near the rights and the title without giving Mr. Higgins and Minnie 50% will sue you for everything you own. And who knows, we may even break you. All right, Holbrook, you win. From now on, we'll cut in Speck and Minnie. Hold this a minute. All right, boys, let's go. I'll go with you. You stay here. Oh, that's what you think. I'll be seeing you later. So Gilbert came through after all. Yeah, but where is Minnie? Why, she's... Uh... <laughs> Pardon me if I say so, but... Yippee! Now look here, Higgins. I'm going to reorganize. From now on, it's the big three publishing company. You, me, and uh, Minnie. You'll have to take it up with my new business manager. I'm gonna give my heart and say I've signed it all away. 